Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I am Rafael and I am here to review episode 3 of Drag Race España. Este capítulo era escándalo, especially at the very end, this whole episode got scandalous. We start off with all the queens coming back into the workroom and as usual, they're wiping away the mirror and Drag Volcano leaves her message and she leaves her headpiece, a couple stars, a couple stickers. And I mean, my favorite, Carmen, she calls it correctly and she says, I personally think that Arancha should have went home and I kind of agree. And I really don't think that Carmen sees it at all for Poopy Poison. She's just not a fan of her. I mean, she keeps throwing these little digs at her and throwing shade, but I think it's kind of joking, but I think it's also partly serious. Like, yeah, I don't take you serious. I don't think that you're competition, which is what my opinion was at first on the first episode. I didn't think Poopy Poison was that much of a competitor and I thought she was gonna go home first, but she proved me wrong, especially last week. But Carmen doesn't see it that way. But the good thing about it is that Poopy Poison is just playful with it. It's like, okay, you could throw shade at me, like, ha ha ha. She just laughs it off and in her confessional, I do think that Poopy Poison has probably the best confessional along with Carmen. And Ignacio is also thankful that Arancha got rid of Drag Volcano because Ignacio thought of Drag Volcano as a big competition. So that was surprising right there. I thought nobody really took Drag Volcano serious. I thought it was just me on island. Like, Drag Volcano, I like you. And I thought the queens didn't see it for her. So it just goes to show that they were probably jealous of Drag Volcano. They wanted her gone as quick as possible because she probably would have been a front runner or gone further in the competition if her personality was a little bit more out there like the rest of the queens. And then Supreme comes out with the pit crew and they come out with their ball sacks. And Supreme tells them that they're gonna have to dress up as soccer players with these outfits that the pit crew member were carrying. And the queens are like, wait, we don't know nothing about soccer. Like, <laughs> I do like that this was a much more physical mini type of challenge where they got to be a little bit more physical with each other instead of a dance or like something typical that we usually see. So this was something new because I don't think the queens have played soccer, have they, on Drag Race? Supreme tells them that they have to do like a mini runway of whatever interpretation of soccer player and they all come out one by one looking a hot mess. All of them look a disaster. <laughs> Is it me or Hugasio kind of looks like that little pound cake doll that Alaska from Drag Race US sells? I kind of see the similarities, especially with the makeup and how Hugasio paints his face on the runway. I kind of see it. And then Arancha had me dying when they said that Inti looks like Ronaldinho, the soccer player, and I couldn't unsee it. I'm like, wait, let me rewind this a little bit. And yeah, Inti kind of did look like Ronaldinho a little bit. And they all continued to come out looking a disaster. And then eventually Supreme announces that Killer Queen is the winner. And Killer Queen is just so adorable, especially in her confessional. Hi, I'm Killer Queen. Nice to meet you. That's the type of vibe that she gives me that when you meet her in person, that's what she'll probably say. But to be playing soccer in high heels, shout out to every single one of them because that took a lot of courage to do. I mean, you fuck around and you break your ankle and you're right out the competition. So kudos to them. I need to try that actually, playing soccer with high heels. That'd be interesting. I think we need to put that into the Olympics or something, make that a sport. Killer Queen ends up winning the main challenge for being the most hideous soccer player. And then the, her reward is she gets to choose who's gonna be paired with who in these categories. And Killer Queen ends up choosing Arancha and that was an interesting choice, but she picks them because, oh, they're quick on their feet with the jokes and stuff, so I get it. And then she picks Carmen and Dovima Nurmi to be in the glamor group. And Carmen's like, well, is that all they think I am? Beauty? Well, I mean, yeah, but at least Carmen could back up her beauty and her cockiness because she has a personality and a very fun and outgoing one. Unlike being a typical, oh, I just look good, but I have no persona behind me. At least she has everything. She has like the full package in my eyes. And that's what Poopy Poison also mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Oh, Carmen just wakes up and she just looks in the mirror and just says, you're the winner. You're the winner. You're the winner, baby. And I mean, if I was Carmen, I would wake up with that attitude too. I mean, why not? And then she puts Sagataria and Inti in the hooker department. And Sagataria's like, yes, that is my true form. I am feeling myself. I mean, same, sis, same. And then the nasty girls end up being Hugasio and Poopy Poison. So everybody has their own little department. Everybody's paired off. So then the main challenge is where it begins. And as the queens are getting ready for the main challenge, they question Killer Queen with, oh, why did you give Carmen the easy glamour, knowing that that's her whole brand? And Killer Queen is just adorable and nice. And I know that Killer Queen does not come from like a bad place 
and genuinely just said, oh, I wanted everybody to feel comfortable. And then NT says, oh, well, at least now Carmen won't be dull. And ooh, and Carmen snaps back, yeah, just like your brain. And NT stays quiet. I'm like, yikes. I mean, NT has kind of just been a little flatline since episode one. And then we get the backstory of Killer Queen talking to Arancha in front of the mirror and saying that when she was younger and when she went to school, she would get picked on by the other kids for being obese and they will wait for her to go into the locker room and undress and take pictures of her while she was undressing. That is terrible. That is so sad, especially seeing how sweet Killer Queen is. Like Killer Queen seems like such a sweetheart. And then crying inside the confessional as well. Shout out to the editors because y'all made it seem as if it was Killer Queen who was going home this week and saying, oh, I don't want to ruin my life because of some assholes. But she was talking about the jerks that bullied her in high school, not the actual queens in the competition. So y'all fooled me because I thought it was going to be Killer Queen and I'm glad it wasn't. But that was just such a heartbreaking story. But I hope that Killer Queen now knows that she is beautiful in and out of dry. Like, you're a beautiful person and you could tell that she has such a pure soul and such a nice, warm heart that she'll just do anything nice for everybody. So I really hope that she's getting all her flowers now, especially with the exposure on the show. First part of the challenge is a photo shoot. And then all the queens do well for the most part, but Inti and Sagittarius stood out to me more specifically because Sagittarius was just downright raunchy with it. <laughs> it was like two cock destroyers on each other. Sagittarius had her whole face in Inti's ass. Like, I'm looking at that like, do you even know them like that? I mean, yeah, you're on a cast together, but you're just putting your whole face inside the booty, but whatever. But I thought they were very hilarious. It was very nice to see Sagittarius in this type of lighting because usually she's all perfect and well poised and stuff. So it was nice to see her kind of break out of that shell and see her do something a little bit more gritty. Hugasio also is another one that stood out to me because they had a more punk rock look and was like, yeah, bitch, we need to do this photo shoot, hurry up. How many more fucking shoots do we need? Poopy was good as well, but Hugasio kind of stood out from that little group. I kind of expected more from Carmen and Delima, but they seem kind of lost and out of touch with each other. Second part of the challenge is when they have to run on a treadmill and y'all were just asking for a lawsuit. I hope those contracts in Spain were tight because the way they were running, it just looked like somebody was gonna twist their ankle and bust their teeth on the floor any second now. But everybody was having fun with it. The hair was blowing. Poopy had me laughing hysterically, especially when the pit crew member came over and was like slapping her butt and she was trying to back it up. And oh my God, the pit crew member, it's been so long. I love the cha-cha song. That is one of my favorite RuPaul remix songs that he has, that cha-cha bitch. Dun -dun -dun. It's just so catchy. So I think it was the perfect song to go with this. Definitely would have loved to see them wear high heels while running on the treadmill at the same time. That will be the chaos I would love to watch. Then we get to the third part of the challenge. And honestly, the acting challenges are never my favorite because I never mostly laugh at any of them. And this one kind of fell into that hole a little bit. I was just kind of watching it like, okay, can we get on with this or like move on? But NT, this stood out to me because NT was just very awkward and shy. And they kept saying like, oh, this is way out of my comfort zone. And yeah, this is the same issue that you had last week with the whole singing performance on stage. I do think that if NT was very, very confident as they say that they are, I think that they will be an unstoppable queen. I really do think so. But I think that the confidence is lacking there. They have the it factor, but it's just the confidence level that's missing. I was really shocked to Sagatari because I really thought Sagatari was also going to be shy and reserved and calm and everything, but she just threw herself out there and I was like, yeah, I'll be on my knees, I'll be screaming, I'll be whipping my hair back and forth. So I was very impressed with Sagatari out of all the queens. She's the one I did not expect to break out the way she did in this challenge. Then it's finally runway time and Supreme comes out looking so damn good. She looks like a beautiful hot tamale in that outfit that she had. And I love the color green on her as well. And she walks down the runway and she announces the judges, of course. And we have a judge named Carlos Ares, which I'm not really familiar who he is. It'll be such a cool idea if the cast from the show Elite, I'm not sure if y'all watched that. It's a show on Netflix and it's based in Spain. I would love to see the cast from that show be a judge every week. Like I will pick any of them, like pick any of the actors or actresses on the show and have them be a guest judge for season two of Drag Race España, which hopefully we do have 
because I would love to see them. I'm a big fan of Elite, especially the new season. It's coming out, what, this week, I believe? But regardless, I that's who I would want to see from España as a guest judge. So Supreme in her beautiful green outfit announces that the category for the runway tonight is that they're going to have to dress in something representing their roots and their background and where they're from. And the first one to come out is Poopy Poison. And her look was so, so beautifully done. I had to Google what a chulupa was from Madrid, but from the silhouette that I saw on my research and from what Poopy was showing, she did the assignment really correctly. She really did justice to the category of the runway with what she was supposed to represent, which was Chulapa de Madrid. And it looks so nice and I love the little representation with the earring. She said that one side was a windmill that represents her grandparents, that they had one from Castilla de la Mancha, and then the other one is an octopus and that represents her grandmother who is from Peru. So I love the entire look, the whole, every little detail of it was good and I thought she represented from where she was really well with her roots. And next is Inti and Inti comes out smashing that entire runway. This was probably the best look to me. I was captivated by every little piece of it. They said that it was inspired by the Diabla of a carnival in Bolivia and that the headpiece also represented the devil on how in black and white Christianity that if you're not the God, you're the devil. So you could see the devil into it. I really enjoyed looking at every single piece of their look. It was like a piece of art in every direction, especially with the makeup. I wish they would have zoomed in on their face just a little bit more and you could see like the more vibrant colors because it looked really good. Is it me or did they change the theme song for the runway this episode? I thought it was Sissy That Walk and then it was a whole different song here. It was Kitty Girl, so I guess they just changed the song whenever it's appropriate, but either way, I don't mind, I guess. Arancha comes out and they have this huge circle representing that they're a piece of cheese from a certain part of the country and then they take it off to reveal, oh, I'm not from La Arancha and I have a piece of ham on me. And the whole the whole look was terrible. I'm sorry, but Arancha needed to be in the bottom two and needed to go home last week because I forgave it the first time, I guess. The second time, okay. And then the third week, yeah, Arancha's not bringing much to the competition. Don't get me wrong. They're a lovely queen. I love the personality and everything, but judging based on what we're seeing on TV, Arancha needs to go. They're way out of their league with the rest of the queens, especially Drag Volcano. I think that we should bring them back and kick Arancha to the curb. I saw what Arancha was going for and it didn't land well and I definitely wouldn't eat this piece of cheese. I would just leave it there to sashay away. And that's my issue too, because they come out all bubbly and laughing at everything. The judges kind of look past the horrible basic outfit that they bring to the runway and they judge them on their persona. And oh my God, we like them though. We want to keep them in the competition instead of judging them for what they're actually bringing to the runway. I guess the runway doesn't count this season. And then Hugasio comes out representing the non-binary flag colors on an outfit that they've constructed. And at first I'm looking at it, I'm like, hmm, I know in Hugasio there's a pattern of we have to really sit down and look at everything because it's so much going on. At first I'm looking at the brown part across their body and then I'm looking at the little shoulder blades and then their makeup is very different. One eyeball is white, but I loved everything. I love the representation. And then when they're about to leave, they turn around and there's a little heart thing right there. And then they scratch it and fire starts coming out, like little fire sparks. So I love that little touch of it. I wonder how they managed to get that through security. Security was waiting for Hugasio backstage, like, uh, you're supposed to give that to us. That's a fire hazard. You're not supposed to have that on here. You want to get eliminated? Give me it. And then Dovima Nurmi comes out and Dovima looked beautiful. Dovima looked like a sculpture that you put on a runway just to look at. They say that they're representing the backstory of San Jordi de Catalonia. The one thing that threw me off a little bit is that they said that the look was supposed to be a princess. I saw that with the dress. A knight, I saw that as well with the helmet. And then they said that it was supposed to represent a dragon, but I didn't see the dragon part. Was it supposed to be the rose? The fact that you feed a dragon a rose or something, I'm not sure where the dragon part was. They also said that their look was inspired from many runway looks of John Galliano's runway looks as well. But Tovi Manurmi, I love this look. This look expensive, this look heavy. I can definitely see this on a runway and you look really great in it. And then Carmen Favala comes out and I know she's my favorite, but Carmen, this is not my favorite look. I'm not saying she looks terrible. I did love the message behind it. It's inspired from an animal called the lynx that's down south of Spain that's going extinct. And I see what they were going for and I love the message behind it, but 
It was giving me very much, oh, I'm going to the Halloween store right now to get a very last minute Catwoman outfit to wear to the party tonight. And this is what I'm wearing. I'm not saying she looked bad because she looked amazing, but it was just pretty meh. And then Sagittaria comes out and I'm telling y'all, I know I mentioned this before in my review, but it's so scary how she looks exactly like Aquarius, like the same face. I kind of want both of them to meet and do a photo shoot together to see how that looks. So her look is inspired by the Crema Catalana, which I had to research and it actually looks good. I need to eat some of that. <laughs> and her look was great. It was very campy. I love the giant spoon and the big thing that she had on her shoulder. I think she should have added a strawberry somewhere on her head or some type of fruit because I see that you could eat fruits with it. I've never had it before, but I saw that you could put like the little red fruits on it. So she should have put something in her hair, but she looked great nonetheless. I love that the outfit looked like it was dripping and oozing. I, I love that type of aesthetic on clothes. And I also love her giant stilettos that she had, those big clear stripper shoes. I love shoes like that. And then the sweet killer queen comes out in a different altered version of what Poopy Poison was wearing earlier. Again, representing the Chulapa de Madrid, but in a more altered version because I see that there was different versions of the outfits from my research. And their look was great too. I love that they're like, oh, this is my version of the look. And I'm also a kitty because I'm a cat myself. And I love the message behind that said, I can't import that, which translates to who cares. But even though I like the look, something about it looked sloppy or as if it was too much. It was like she needed to cut down just a little bit because when they were coming out, I was like, okay, you got the nails, you got the whiskers, you got the cat ears and you got the outfit. But then when they turned around, it was like, oh, whoa, 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 it's a whole different outfit. So she could have cut down just a little, maybe added the rainbow somewhere on the front a little bit, but it was almost as if she was wearing two different outfits at the same time. It was way too cluttered. And then we get to the judging and this is where shit starts getting questionable. I'm like, Drag Race Espana, please don't start acting like Drag Race Down Under like with their critiques and their comments or let alone Drag Race Canada because the judging here was, uh, I don't know, I didn't already, I did not agree with what happened last week's decision and these comments were a little wishy-washy. They start off with Killer Queen and Arancha's performance and they like it, they love Arancha's performance, they love her aura, but they're saying that, oh, Killer Queen really don't know who you really are, you have no personality. And I'm like, uh, yeah, she does. What are y'all not seeing that? I mean, maybe it doesn't translate what she shows everybody else in the workroom and her vulnerable moments in the workroom on stage, but she does have a persona. To me, she's not bland at all. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that Killer Queen is just fading into the background? And I'm glad that Anna called out Arancha saying that, oh, you need to look out for your outfits because mama, this is garbage. And the guest judge, Carlos says, oh, I have to disagree with you. I love the look. I thought it was so badass with your attitude. I think a drag queen is much more than her look. I'm like, Okay, Carlos, you could take an exit now, like head that way quickly. This is exactly what I told you at the beginning of my reviews for the first couple episodes, is that they're gonna favor Arancha and take her as far as possible because of the persona and because they like them and, oh my God, you're just so cool. And we love your lab. We think you're so funny. You're gonna make it to top three, don't worry. Oh, you're gonna wear a trash bag next week? It's fine, we love you. Like, yeah, you're a good personality, you're good TV. And that's exactly what Arancha's downfall is. And it's unfortunate because they should be judging them fairly because they're a really lovely queen, but stop trying to drag this out any longer. Like put them in the bottom two and call it a day. Then we get to Carmen and Lovima. And for the most part, they say good critiques and Carmen starts crying and Carmen's like, I don't want to cry on TV. And it was just so nice to see a much more vulnerable side to Carmen because usually it's like this bad bitch, I'm a supermodel, nobody could tell me nothing attitude, but it was nice to see her not cry because of the reasons why she cried, but it was nice to see a much more softer side to her. And they told Dovima that they need to work on their walk because every time they walk, it looks like they're about to fall over, which I did notice when they replayed it again. I'm like, hmm, it looks like they just took a giant shit in their pants and they're like, oh fuck, I need to walk very slowly. I don't want this to slip out my booty hole. And then they get to Inti, and this is the other shit that was a little questionable because the judge, Anna, says, um, yeah, I like your outfit, but yeah, that dress was too white. And those boots were white, but with a shade of white. I'm not sure if that was the right white I wanted to use. Yeah, I think it should have been a little bit whiter. 
and then your top should have been less white. We get it, but you are nitpicking Anna saying, oh, if the sun was to hit this specific white, I think it would turn it a different shade. Like what? Who says that? Not even Michelle from US Drag Race will say some bullshit like that. But then again, yes, she would. One of the hobbies also says that, yeah, NT, you're not really confident on stage. I mean, in the Divas Challenge, you weren't confident. Here, you weren't confident. It's not progressing. You're just staying in one spot and it seems like you're very uncomfortable to be here. It must be overwhelming having all these cameras in a whole different environment like this. And again, not everybody's out there on 10. And Inti's definitely not one of those persona who's out there on 100. And eventually, Killer Queen, Arancha, Carmen, and Hugasio end up being safe. And I agree with those except Arancha. Y'all really just gonna let them skate by through the competition like this? How can you call Arancha safe standing right next to Dovima, Nurmi, in that outfit? And Inti just look like they're just three seconds away from throwing that devil head at him. And they're just like, Mm -hmm. And then the telenovela moment comes and they storm off to the back and they start taking all off their shit. They start taking off their boots, their makeup. They start taking off their clothes. And I'm like, what? So it was NT, the one that they foreshadowed in the preview last week, that they're the one going home this week. I was gagged. They were not fucking around. They were like, I'm putting all my shit away. They can't see the beauty in me. They can't see what I'm bringing to the table. I'm sick of it. But I do agree with the other queens that you're just having a heated moment. You can't take criticism. You can't see that what they're trying to help you with is true. And you're just taking it as an attack. Like Dovima said also, you have too many demons or skeletons in your closet that you haven't dealt with, that you need to deal with in order to gain that confidence and hopefully somehow maybe come back in the future for All Stars International somehow if you're invited because then Supreme goes backstage. And for a second, I thought Supreme was just gonna grab them by the hair like, Listen, you little puta, you're gonna come back to this fucking stage and you're gonna perform, okay? Get your shit ready and put those fucking ugly white boots back on. Put your damn cape back on too, bitch. I really thought Supreme was gonna go off because it was getting heated between them. NT said, I said what I said, I'm leaving, what don't you get? And Supreme just looked like she wanted to just backhand them really quickly. But you know what, I'm gonna keep it classy because I want a season two. That was just such a tense moment, a scandalo. It was really like watching a live soap opera on Drag Race, it was crazy. So Supreme's like, you know what? Fuck you, we still need to make a show. Queens, let's go. We're all going back on the stage because fuck this hole. Like, we're going back over there. Let's go. And NT ends up leaving Drag Race España season one. And it's such a shame. They had uh, so much potential, but again, it was that confident factor. Maybe in the future, we'll see more of them and hopefully they do well after the show. And then that brings up my next point. So Dovima was going to be in the bottom two with Inti? Why? I'm not understanding that decision. I think it should have been Arancha and Inti. And then Supreme says, you're still gonna lip sync for your life, but you're just gonna give us a one person show. To so the song Moca Tres, which is really catchy. I never heard that song before, but it was so catchy. Moca Tres, Moca Tres. But honestly, we could have done without this performance, Supreme, because Dovima's lip sync was just, maybe it was the dress, but y'all could have saved this for something else or whatever or put this as a behind the scene or exclusive clip somewhere on wow presents because this was just not needed but i did love how all the judges got up from the table and started dancing as well as all the other queens when they came on stage and they started dancing with them as well so for that i guess it was a nice way to end it off the big gag would have been if supreme would have been like oh just because Inti's going home, somebody still needs to go home. So we're gonna put another person in their place. We're gonna have a lip sync for your life between two queens instead of just one. Next week, surprisingly though, is the Snatch Game. That's what I'm also interested to see, like what characters everybody does. I'm sure I'm probably not gonna know any of them, so I'm gonna have to do my research for that as well. But I'm very excited to see what's that. What did y'all think of this episode? Do y'all think that Inti left accordingly or do I think that they had a little bit more umph to go in the competition or were the judges critiques a little off but that was the episode y'all let me know what y'all think of this episode let me know what y'all thought about this whole challenge what do y'all think of Drag Race España so far I think it's pretty well just these judging and eliminations could be a little bit better but hopefully it doesn't continue on to next week but we'll see let me know what y'all think don't forget to like comment and subscribe and follow me on Instagram Twitter and TikTok bye y'all